is so heavy, bro. Yeah. Mine gets heavier every time I fly. <laughs> This weekend, we're preaching at uh, the Promise Church. Very first time you see the fear of the Lord in the Bible is Genesis chapter 22, and Abraham raises the knife to kill his son. God says, "Don't kill him." And what does He say to him? Now I know that you fear. Because you have not withheld from me. You have not withheld from me. Fearing the Lord is withholding nothing from him. That's the essence of the fear of the Lord. Solomon taught and knew the fear of the Lord, but he withheld from the Lord. He kept these women and they turned his heart from his God. Are you following me? So I had to go there because the scripture has this incredible statement that says Solomon loved the Lord but dot 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 Solomon loved the Lord but it's the additions that cause all the subtractions in your life it's the additions that kill us A.W. Tozer wrote it's the A.N.D. that slays Christianity Jesus and instead of recognizing Jesus is all. And so we see here this incredible statement about Solomon. Recapping, he's got wisdom, right? Recapping, he's got glory. Recapping, he's peace. He's got much peace. And recapping, he has love. Now we have this statement from Jesus in chapter 12 of Matthew, verse 42. Jesus looks at them and he says, someone greater then Solomon is here. <laughs> somebody, says, somebody says, doesn't that sound a little arrogant? You have the greatest glory of Israel, Solomon. Even to this day, you talk to a Jew about history, and they will have great reverence for the height of the glory of Israel under King Solomon. And then Jesus stands in front of Jews, and he says, someone greater than Solomon is here. <laughs> you may say... You may look at that, you may hear that, and you say, man, that's kind of, don't you think that's a little arrogant of Jesus to say? I mean, he's, that's a little arrogant, don't you think? No, let me tell you, it's not, no, not only is it not arrogant, it is humiliation for him who created all things to liken himself to something he created. He's humbling himself. It is humility to say someone greater than Solomon is here, because he just said himself in the same sentence as his creation. Temple. Here's two golden calves. This is Yahweh who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And they, they go with him. But it hit me, man, that the presence of the Lord, he knew, would bring about unity. So he tried to stop them from getting to the presence of the Lord by giving a substitute and, and saying to them, you know, uh, it's too much. In other words, it's the value that Christ has or the value of the secret place isn't, isn't that much. You shouldn't do that much. And so it just hit me that these two things are what stops people from going into the presence of the Lord. One, lack of value. And two, replacements other things.
Yeah, I haven't played basketball in I don't even know how long. Years. So you're going to show them how it's done? I don't know. I don't have any basketball shoes or basketball shorts, so I don't know. Real pros can do it in jeans. That's the key word, real pros. <laughs> yeah. That, that is, if you, in a sense, a revived, beautiful, yeah. revived group. Yeah. yeah. You could feel it in the air. Good. Last night. Yeah. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, yeah, it was awesome. It was really good. Bro, your word was awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was really good. It's a key, it's a precious thing to me right now. Yeah, well, just how you like, hey, here was how glorious Solomon was. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jesus is like one greater than Solomon yeah. is here. It's like, oh, wow, yes, he did say that. Wow, yeah. that is amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it helps, I think, sometimes Spurgeon would do this a lot, is yeah. to take an illustration of way lesser value before you bring in the real one so that the contrast is clearly seen. Like I did it last night with the, if there was a snake in the room, yes, everybody would feel weird here. An angel, you would be like, God? Right, <laughs> you know? right. And that they would want to encounter him daily, spend time in his presence daily, uh, love him and worship him in a manner in, in which he is worthy, uh, and then tell other people about him and share the gospel with their friends, their coworkers, their neighbors. How do you think you're cultivating that here now like what are your what are your steps in a sense yeah well we are in a process of building that culture and equipping our church and how to have daily personal encounters with the presence of God and how to connect with God daily um, we emphasize it on a regular basis about preaching the gospel we facilitate discipleship and outreach opportunities on a regular basis and really just push for our people to grow in hunger for the Lord and worship him passionately and so that's just uh, just something we've been building for for years so You know what God esteems? Sometimes we esteem gifts, we esteem healings and miracles, and these things are wonderful, they're all part of Him. But you know what God esteems? Someone who is contrite in their heart and who trembles at His word. What does it mean to tremble at His word? It means you believe it. You remember Jeremiah chapter 2? God speaks to his people, and he says they're doing two things wrong. Now, obviously, they're doing way more than two things wrong. But to God, these are the two things that they're doing wrong. One, they have neglected or forsaken him, the fountain of living water. And they've hewn out for themselves cisterns, cisterns that cannot hold water. What does that mean? It means that they're looking to other things for the satisfaction only God can give. God is saying, here's your evils. You're not drinking of me. Did you know it's an evil thing not to drink the Lord? God thinks it is. Here's your evil. You don't drink of the fountain of life anymore. So I say this to say, let us not become so familiar that we drift away. You know, the worst kind of drifting, of, drifting away is when your language is still right. These people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me, yeah. Jesus says. Yeah. This is a danger that we have in Christianity, especially in America. Yeah. When you see Paul says things like, you know, as those chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on yeah. compassion, I gentleness, I, humility, my, my patience. Mind, I have to have all He's stuff describing the character that we have, could only have a grid for it in Christ. Yeah. So even that's preaching Christ. Yeah. 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 Right. Christ in our midst, changing people's lives is something specific that you, you want to jump into more with the people. That's, that's the book. Well, right now we're in a kick of, well, we're not in a kick, but this is the main thing, is preaching Jesus. Like, we we're going through the I Am series right now. Oh, great. And you just poured fuel on the fire. Yeah, the I Am's of Jesus. Yeah. I Am filling the bomb. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. What do you think about this weekend? <laughs> what did I think about this weekend? Yeah. I felt like there was undeniable presence of the Lord. 
the worship and the people were engaging the Lord in such a direct way that it was a, a trembling, a peace at the same time. And I got to preach the sermon I've been waiting to preach, which is comparing, actually not even comparing, raising Christ higher than Solomon. That's what I think. And it was, it was fun being with Josh Kelly. He's crazy. Yeah,